Lynn Roberts, and I'm running for position three, uh, Rick's running for one. And um, I ran for Kevin Kissinger in 2012. And ever since that time, I just kept attending the meetings, and I was allowed to be a correspondent of sorts for the Upright Independent. And so I stayed involved in the, in the business and the agenda and the issues affecting our county. And that's what's prompted me to run again, because I see a real direction of our county that um, is, is not, I hate the word, but it's not sustainable. <laughs> we have, uh, we're just headed, around, in my view, in a real wrong direction, and we need some leadership that will help us uh, redirect our county. We have a great county, and um, if I finish on, I want to tell you a little bit about myself and then the specific direction I would love to see our county go. I'm a native of Southern Oregon as well, and um, I'm a long-term business owner in uh, Eagle Point. And uh, besides being a correspondent, um, during that time I did finish my master's degree in business administration. And a lot of the stuff, I, we spoke last night, we had a meeting at the Republican headquarters, so a lot of it will be duplicated, but there was some stuff I left out, and so I'll bring that to the forefront today. But the main, the three reasons I want to see our county um, re-energized and re-directed uh, is one is economic growth. Um, we've all seen the businesses close. It's really a tough environment to run a business. And the jobs that are lost um, is, is detrimental to our county and to the livelihood of staying here in Jackson County. In fact, um, I saved this for a prop for speaking. This was recently in the paper, a list of foreclosures for 2014 in Jackson County. And that's just, it's just unacceptable. And that's because people aren't working. And we need to get the businesses here. And my view of getting business here and working is removing some of those restrictions and fees. I talked to business owners across the valley. And the restrictions um, to opening a business, like I did uh, over 20 years ago, I don't know if I could do it today. And the fees that, that we have to pay to stay in business is really is a lot. And you know, I've always heard, you know, God gives you lemons, you make lemonade. Well, God gave us natural resources in Southern Oregon. And we're seeing the smoke, not the harvest in management. And uh, there is, uh, Ken Ivory has a wonderful program about uh, American Land Transfer Act. And Klamath County just signed a proclamation to uh, say they wanted to go that way and in, in uh, challenging other counties to do the same. And I would love Jackson County to be a county that signed on with that. We definitely need a governor, um, unlike we have today, to complement that and take those proclamations countywide uh, to a state good for Oregon and for Jackson County. You know, I have statistics that show where Jackson County stands um, in the <coughs> employment, in, employment in our counties, and there's a rate that's called the employment rate for um, among our counties, the 36 counties, Jackson County is number 30th. And they didn't used to be, this is the last 10 years. We've really sunk low, and you, and you can tell by the amount of people on the entitlements, the amount of people on unemployment. And we just need to get people back to work, and we have the potential for it here in Oregon, and in Jackson County, and I'm excited to do that. We have a judge's order about our natural resources that they wanted the federal lands harvested, and we haven't done that. I make sure the judge's order is followed. Where's our judge? He left. <laughs> but I think the judge's order it carries a pretty uh, good impact to our um, natural resources developed. Secondly, as a business owner, I sign the front of the checks, not the back. And that's an important feature in doing the financial planning for our county. And we need to have fiscal responsibility in our county. We have a huge change in our county with the passage of the library uh, tax district. And that money shouldn't just be flaunted away. And um, I would see to it that every penny is accounted for. I believe in a zero uh, balancing of all black contracts, a zero fund balance where every penny is accounted for. And um, I have the capability of looking over financial um, reviews and statements that um, would look them over for our, our money here in Jackson County. I think our government should be small and the private sector should be growing not vice versa here all the time. Jackson County is doing great. Well, the paper doesn't show it. Our employment statistics don't show it. Jackson County may be doing great. The private sector is not. And that is who I, 
want to represent is the private sector in Jackson County. And I know I'm speaking to the choir. <laughs> I'm glad the choir's here, though. <laughs> um, the third most important thing I bring to the County Commission is a transparent and accountability issue that I feel is so important. Um, I love our County Mission Statement. It says it's the Jackson County is to provide public services that protect and enhance the quality of life in our county and has three qualifiers. The very first one is as determined by the people. I just think that's awesome. If I want to bring that statement alone to life as your county commissioner, I think it should be determined by the people. And when you see, I've gone to a bazillion county commissioner meetings and one in particular was about the county was going to um, have the veterinarians, a private industry, report to them when dogs aren't come in for care or rabies shots that aren't licensed. And the, the veterinarians were for it. And I talked to a local veterinarian. They had a public hearing. I said, go to the meetings and testify. Get your business. And so he did. The room was packed. Not one citizen spoke up for this. And the commissioners passed it anyway. And I felt so bad. I called him after the meeting. I said, I am so sorry. And he said, oh, I knew it would be good anyway. I said, oh, that is a sad state of, a, of county government when people feel it does no good to go and, and voice their opinion in mass, much less alone. And I sure want the county citizens to have an active role in their county government. It's in our mission statement. It's on the, the county documents as head of our county, as the citizens of Jackson County. And with me as your commissioner, you will feel you are the head of Jackson County. But most importantly, I wanted to, to let you know I have some data to give you tonight, this afternoon. It is almost tonight. <laughs> anyway, um, uh, I did receive, and I thank you for the nomination for this position from the Republican Party. And I also received the write-in nomination from the Democrat Party, which was kind of unusual. I wasn't sure what to do with it, but I did accept it. And so, so many people come in and talk to me and go, so when do you start office? Haven't you started your new job yet? You know? It's not my job yet. I still run the general election, and I do have an opponent. And he is a registered Democrat from Ashland, and he's running this. He, he only received 30 write-in votes um, from his party in the, in the primary. That's one-tenth of one percent of the registered voters of his party. So he went to the independent party and won a nomination there where he received 58 votes. And that's statewide of 100,000 voters, so it's about 0.06% of a representative vote. And that is who is running um, against uh, me for this position. So I hope you realize um, the data behind him, where he's coming from, and he kind of, I haven't debated or had a forum, we have a couple coming in this next week. But um, he's kind of presenting himself as a nice moderate, but he's definitely a leftist. Um, Democrats, so be aware. The other piece of data I'm excited to share with you is, uh, Steve and I were talking on the way home last night after the, the forum at the, um, the headquarters, and I, we, I said, you know, I think in Jackson County there's been two Republican commissioners. I think there was Carol Doty and Sue Capillas. And as far as I understand, they are both Democrats. And I thought, this is an opportunity for the Republicans to have the first female commissioner from the Republican Party. And with your vote and support, I'd be so happy to you. Something, if there is a need 
that that freed up money from the libraries may support. You know, I, I think it's important for the people. If that is something that's a need and is determined by the people that's a need for the county, then we should look at it. And, and so, you know, I will take a peek at the budget and see what funding. I, as far as I understand, most of the funding for the district attorney does come from the state. But it is our, it is one of our um, departments that we manage, so I definitely would look at it. Yeah, and because I think, I think in Josephine County, if it was state funded, it wouldn't have been, the office wouldn't have been diminished like it is. It must be county funded. Um, some of it, yeah. I, the funding streams are very difficult to follow, and um, and, and the funding streams are something I'm interested in looking at. Um, definitely for our public safety, they're very important, and um, and sh sure will be looked at. I did want to add though that the district attorney position itself is supplemented by the state, but for the most part, everything else in the DA's office is paid out of your local funding. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's a, so. There's you know maybe we pay eighty thousand to the DA and the state kicks them another thirty to forty. I know they recently um, had a, an agenda item on the commissioners that took a special grant from the state for a second district attorney position in their department <clears throat> for a specific reason, and I can't remember what it was. But so they, they look at additional staffing, I'm sure, with grants from the state. Are there any other questions? Um, Is there a date uh, certain on your forms that you're going to be talking with your opponent? Uh, this next week we have two. Um, three. Uh, Wednesday at noon at Midford City Hall, there is League of Women Voters. It's one hour, it's going to be quick, and um, it's in their main auditorium <coughs> on, on 8th Street, I guess. And Thursday, there's a group called Rogue Valley University Club, and it's also at noon, and it is uh, apparently a building next <coughs> to the Holly Theater. <laughs> I'm still trying to find an address, but I assume it's that brick building. It looks like a university. I don't know it was a long time, but I never noticed the building before. But those are the first two coming up this week. I believe um, Friday, Campaign for Liberty is having a forum here at the library at 6. But I have everything posted. I have a website and on my Facebook page. And it's ColleenRoberts.net, and the Facebook page is Colleen for Commissioner. It's on my little... Uh, business card because I can pick one up, but I try to keep everything current on there of uh, where I'm going to be and my schedule and, and uh, information that I can get out. I think social media has a great advantage. I've seen it in the campaign, what, how it can reach the citizens, and I would be interested to see how that would bring the citizens closer to their county government too once I'm in there. I think it's a, uh, an amazing feature that maybe hasn't been used, that could be used to, to bring citizens more full aware of what's going on in the county and interactive as well. It's kind of exciting. And I think the difference, you know, Ruth talked about, you know, we need people, you know, we have a short group here, we need people fired up and, and involved. You know, we need can, candidates and elected officials that want to serve, they're not just building a, a, a job itinerary for themselves. They want to serve, and I hear that from the candidates here tonight. We have people that want to serve and want to be there for the, for the citizens, and that is, the heart for the people is so important. Thank you very much.